Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are going to check out some brand new Takara Tomy figures. This time we've got more of the Jurassic World Dominion figures to take a look at, and we are checking out the Atrociraptor squad this time around. What's interesting though is one Atrociraptor is sold individually, the other are sold in a group, the other three which I think is really weird. I don't know why they wouldn't have just put all of them together, but Atrociraptor Tiger is sold individually, and then Panthera, Ghost, and Red are sold separately. However, you know, one thing I've been kind of commenting on is how good the sculpts are and how screen accurate the sculpts are of a lot of these Takara Tomy figures. These ones, not so much, especially when it comes to the coloration. I think the sculpts look a little bit off as far as the head sculpts go. They do look very similar, but a little bit off. But the coloration of these is just very confusing because we've got ourselves Atrociraptor Red. Well, I don't know where Atrociraptor Red is because it doesn't really look like we have one. The only figure that I can assume would be Atrociraptor Red would be this one here, even though it's clearly got a very orangish body rather than kind of like a reddish orange like you see on Atrociraptor Red. But you also have Panthera, which I would imagine then would be this one. And although it does look kind of similar, it also sports that just kind of like reddish tone. And then you, of course, have Tiger, which this is probably, shockingly, the best Tiger we've had as far as the coloration goes, because Mattel seems to really not be able to figure that one out. But the Takara Tomy version, as far as Tiger goes, is quite nice. And then you've got Ghost, of course, would be the final one. And... Ghost looks pretty good. Maybe a little more color would have been nice, but still not terrible. But regardless, we're going to jump straight to a closer look at all of these right now. So starting with what I would assume would be a Atrociraptor Panthera, you can see that sculpt-wise it does look pretty good as far as the detailing goes. I think the arms look a little bit awkward and the hands definitely look a little bit too big. The head sculpt looks okay, but it doesn't look perfect as far as the Atrociraptors look in the film. And Again, this is probably the first time I think that Takara Tomy so far this time around with the Dominion figures has given us something that I felt like looked a little bit off as far as the screen accuracy goes. It doesn't look bad, doesn't look too far off, but there's just something a little strange about the head sculpts of these Atrociraptors. But again, as far as this particular version goes, you can see that we have some nice detailing there in the face. You can see some nice creasing as you lead down the neck, and there's also kind of like some ridges running along the top of the head down the neck and then they kind of taper off as you reach the shoulder area. We have a dark brown up here on the face. You can see it in the palette and everything as well. That's very nicely applied with an airbrush. You can also see a light tone for the eye and a black pupil. We of course have an articulated jaw. We've got kind of like a light pinkish tone in there and the teeth are a little bit obnoxious looking. It almost looks like the Atrociraptor has braces. Over here looks a lot nicer. I think the paint's just a little too thick on the opposing side. But the teeth on the lower jaw look pretty good, that's definitely for sure. But uh, again, it works pretty nicely, just looks a little weird as far as those teeth go. As you transition back though, you can see that we turn into an orangish tone. You can see the orange in the face as well as down here on the lower jaw. You can see more of that brown popping up here and there. And you also have a nice white for the underside of our Atrociraptor. As you move down, you can see some nice looking skin detail there in the stomach. Some creasing right there behind the arm and the skin, some nice muscle definition. And you've got some scoots down the fingers as well as some big bulky nails for the hands, but they are painted with a gray. Again, the hands look a little bit weird. They look oddly large to me. And you can see that we transition though from the orange to a white back here again on the hands, the same white that we have for the underside. And there's more of that brown that kind of runs along the border between the orange and the white, you can see more of that brown, and that continues to do that as we move out the entire course of the tail. It does look nice as far as the coloration goes, it just doesn't really look like a Atrociraptor Panthera. As you move along though, you can make out the spinal column up here on the back, some nice muscle definition in the thigh and calf region, the kneecap as well, and again we transition from the orange to the white down here on the feet, and you can see that the feet look really good, like those are gorgeously sculpted feet, really nice scoots down the toes nicely, sculpted and painted nails. The nails of course could look a little sharper, but they're always kind of dull and big and bulky like that when it comes to the Takara Tomy figures. That's just the way they look. You can see the dew claws as well. And then you can move back up here again as you lead out the length of the tail. You see more really nice skin texture as well as those big 
kind of ball joints for the Takara Tomy figures, which at this point are pretty much, you know, part of their charm, I would say. But you can, again, see the other side looks pretty much the same. The arm's in a slightly different position, it looks like, compared to the other side. But the legs are articulated, so the positioning of the legs would then depend on you and how you prefer them to be. And then, of course, you have the articulation in two spots on the tail, which you can see that you can articulate quite nicely with the ball joint articulation. But... It's not the best Atrociraptor in the world, and definitely not the best Atrociraptor Panthera, but it's still a pretty fun-looking version, especially for a Takara Tomy version. Now, the sculpts, I believe, look to be all the same for all of the different Atrociraptors. They're just different. Well, my camera would focus on this one. They're just different paint jobs. And yet again, this one here, I believe, is meant to be Atrociraptor Red, but we've got, again, an orangish tone, very Lost World Jurassic Park type of an orange, for this one and similar to Panthera we have that kind of darker brown in the face there that's kind of nicely airbrushed but it's a little more focused on the eye socket and palette area whereas the previous Atrociraptor you can see it's kind of like that but also up on the top of the head whereas we don't see that on Atrociraptor Red but you can see again we have the articulated jaw same tone of color it looks like potentially on the inside of the mouth it's actually like a purplish tone it looks like potentially you do have color on the inside of the mouth on the upper side again the teeth are pretty big and bulky kind of weird looking definitely not great as far as the teeth on any of them so far but you can see that we primarily have an orangish tone again for the body of this one as we move down you also have that light tone here on the underside but this time the light tone starts in the chest whereas on panthera it started in the throat you can see it also tapers off here in the groin area. We can see a little hint of yellow there as well, which is pretty cool to see some nice yellows right there. You can see that the hands transition to a white, similar to what we saw on Panthera, but potentially a slightly different shade, again with the gray nails. The feet do not transition, though. One thing we saw on Panthera was that the feet transition to a white. We don't have that here on Atrociraptor Red. You can see that the nails are, again, painted with that nice grayish tone, and we did get paint for the dew claws. You start to have a white striping here right around the hip area, and then we basically have the orange and then the white striping the rest of the way out here onto the tail of Atrociraptor Red. But again, it's one of those situations where I just feel like nobody can really perfectly recreate the coloration of these Atrociraptors. I don't know, Mattel just seems to be a little wonky as far as theirs go, and now Takara Tomy, pretty much the same thing. They are really cool looking figures, that is for sure. They're just a little bit off, and yet again we have the same articulation on this one again with the jaw, and then same deal with the legs, especially since they're all the same sculpt, they're all going to have that same articulation to them. And then you've got Atrociraptor Tiger, which finally I feel like actually looks pretty decent, although this one Looks a little bit almost too much like a Lost World Jurassic Park raptor rather than a Atrociraptor tiger. You can see yet again we have that brownish tone in the face. Something with these orange Atrociraptors that Takara Tomy loves to give them that brown. And you can see that we again have a nicely painted eye. The eyes of all of them look pretty good. You have some very nice, very uh, precise paintwork for the eyes. This time though we have a white lower jaw which is pretty nice because the others didn't have any real color variation on the jaw. Same tone of color for the inside of the mouth. I think the teeth, although still a little sloppy, look a little bit better on Tiger compared to the others. As you move down, you get a very dark striping that runs down the course of the back of Tiger. We have the transition to a white for the arms, but rather than starting in the hand area like we saw in the last two, it actually starts up there pretty far and pretty high up in the arm. Same deal for the legs. You can again see as we transition to that white there on the legs, but this time in the calf region. You've got the gray nails, yet again, just like we saw on the other two. You can see we have that light tone running all the way down the underside from the lower jaw to the groin area before disappearing. Very Mattel-like move there. And then we have the striping that pretty much runs the entire course of the tail, which is not very Mattel-like and does look fantastic on this version of Atrociraptor Tiger. And again, although it's very stiff right there, you can see same style of articulation. You've got the jaw the legs, and then the tail. And then the only one that really looks very, very different would be Ghost, and you can see Ghost pretty much has that kind of like a light gray or an off-white tone for the entire body, and then it has the gray that kind of like stripes and designs throughout, 
And that's really about it as far as real color variation for the figure. You don't see any alternate tones of color for the underside of Ghost. You basically just have those two tones that run primarily through the entire body. You do have gray nails, which is nice. And again, that's the same tone of gray it looks like that we had on all of the Atrociraptors. And yes, we did get the dew claws on all of them, which is a huge plus. And you also have those red eyes and black pupils like you see associated with Atrociraptor Ghost, which is also good. And you can see that we have that same light tone of color for the inside of the mouth. And the teeth look way better on Ghost than they did on, honestly, any of the others. So Ghost is probably the superior Atrociraptor figure out of all of these right here. I would say Ghost is definitely the best looking one and definitely a really nice version of Ghost. Of course, it could have used a little bit more paint, maybe a little bit more of that gray, but it does still look really, really cool. And uh, it's probably my favorite, I would say, out of, of course, these right here, but also out of all of the Atrociraptor designs we've seen because it really has that kind of almost like a gp3 female raptor type look to it but definitely a really nice looking sculpt and paint job on this one the atrociraptors can stand pretty nicely as well which is good news for them sometimes you have some issues when it comes to bipedal dinosaurs it just takes a minute to kind of figure out the positioning of the feet before you can get them to stand and what is good about the fact that we've articulated legs is you can do things like this whoops well it fell you do things like this where a tiger can stand in a different position and then like you can put ghost up you know fairly upright to kind of give it a totally different look and have them look really neat and not looking like they're all the exact same figure which is a plus but as far as a size goes we'll take all of them out except for one we really only need to measure the length and height on one if i can get the legs in the right spot again they're a little complicated so it's kind of in an upright position currently for a length you are looking at about the i'd say a little over five and a quarter approaching five and a half but not quite there or around 13 and a half centimeters and then now if we get the stand back up we'll get a height now the layer there we go we'll get a height on the atrociraptor in the position it's in about two and a half inches or six and a half centimeters for a size comparison there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line next to our Atrociraptor squad from Takara Tomy. And you can see that when it comes to a Takara Tomy version of the Atrociraptors, it's pretty much exactly where you would expect it as most Takara Tomy figures are right around the same size with only every once in a great while you'll find a figure that kind of varies from the size of the others, but definitely the size you would expect if you are familiar with the Takara Tomy line. And then for another comparison, we've got a few of the Mattel Atrociraptors here standing in to give you a good idea of the fact that the Mattel versions are much larger than the Takara Tomy versions, as they usually are. That's, again, something that is definitely to be expected, as the Takara Tomy versions are usually quite a bit smaller. But uh, I don't know who I would pick this time around when it comes to the sculpt. Obviously, the paint, shockingly, is a little bit better and more screen accurate from Mattel, but... The sculpts, I think, uh, I don't know. I really am having a hard time deciding if I like the Takara Tomy version or the Mattel versions better, but I'm pretty much a fan of all of them, honestly. And then we've got ourselves two of the Toy Monster International Captives Atrociraptors next to our Takara Tomy versions. And at this point, I think it's safe to say that the Toy Monster International versions are the reigning champions when it comes to both the sculpt and paint jobs. I would say they're probably the best that are currently available, but these Takara Tomy versions are still pretty cool. So these brand new Jurassic World Dominion Takara Tomy Atrociraptor figures are pretty fun and it's absolutely awesome to have another version of the squad, that's for sure, as we have a full squad of Mattel now released in both the, uh, actually the minis, we've got the main line as well as the basic versions, but we also have the full Atrociraptor squad released in the Toy Monster International Captives line now and we officially have all of the Takara Tomy versions as well even if the Takara Tomy versions are a little bit off as far as the paint jobs go they are still really cool looking Atrociraptor figures and definitely look fairly similar to the Atrociraptors from the film again I said my favorite was definitely Ghost this time around when it comes to the Takara Tomy versions and that's definitely my Opinion going forward, as I think Ghost just generally looks the best here, as far as the 
uh, placement of the paint, like the paint is really nicely done on Ghost. And even though it could, you know, use a little more color, it still looks really good as far as what we've been given. The teeth look better than any of the others on Ghost. And just generally, it's an awesome looking paint scheme that Ghost has. Then you've, of course, got Panthera, which I don't think Panthera here really looks too much like Panthera from the film color wise, but it's a, still a pretty cool looking paint scheme they've given it. But it definitely could have been better and would have been better had they actually given us a paint job that looked close to the Dominion version and then you also have Atrociraptor Red which might be the worst of all of them because I think the paint application just doesn't really look too great on Atrociraptor Red I mean it's kind of similar as far as the design goes but the tones of color are definitely off yet again as it seems like they didn't even really try when it comes to matching the actual primary body tones of color for these Atrociraptors they were just like you know what they all look orange let's just make them all orange and that's kind of what they did here with with at least three of the four and then you also have Atrociraptor Tiger which is the only one that's kind of a standalone release which again is very strange but I do think Tiger looks good even if Tiger looks a little bit more like a Lost World Jurassic Park Velociraptor than it probably should it still looks pretty neat as far as the coloration goes so as a whole all of them are pretty nice they have some fun articulation and it's definitely again pretty cool to have the entire Atrociraptor squad now in the Takara Tomi line as well so if you are interested in picking these up I'll include links in the description to where you can do that so make sure you check those links grab these very cool Atrociraptors and like comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next review thanks for watching